the intent behind those words are for your people to be inspired, right? So when, when a person walks into their organization, they look up and they say, those are my words to live by, right? That's my corporate mantra. That's my personal mantra. But if those words aren't, aren't lived daily, and if they're not heard daily, then they're just empty words, right? They're, they're just, uh, they're, they're literally just wallpaper. And so our food on certain days just didn't come. And so we would rely on lunch to be served at dinner, the leftovers. My responsibility was to make sure they're fed first. And once, once everybody went through the chow line, there were several times when I just had a couple pieces of corn or some green peas left over, which I hate, but that was all that was left over. What it really means is there's a mentality that as a leader, you gotta be selfless and you put your people first. And, and you got to have the mentality that you work for those individuals, not they work for you. And that's why leaders eat last. Leadership, frankly, is a culture. Uh, it's a culture. It's a mentality that you have in an organization. It's a mentality of appreciating and celebrating your folks before you've had the opportunity to appreciate or celebrate anything you've accomplished. It's making sure that you're celebrating wins on behalf of them, not necessarily because of your leadership or, or how you facilitated it. The lowest ranking person in your company has the right and the opportunity given the, the correct mentorship and development to be a leader. And so it's, it's more of a culture than it is a responsibility. Decisiveness is, is an incredibly positive trait to have as a leader, right? But also with decisiveness, you can pair that with humility. And humility in the form of, I made a wrong decision let's pivot from here and go a different direction. You know, lead by example is a very simple mantra that you should have on a daily basis. And that's when you walk in the door, that's your attitude. You know, how are you coming off to other individuals? Are you positive? Are you negative? You know, a leader is supposed to be a steady, um, even keeled individual that people can depend on. People can, can depend on their attitude. They can depend on their advice, their opinion. Um, in addition to attitude, your morale, you know, how do you bring it each day? Are you a giver or are you a taker? You know, are you a heat shield or are you a heat conductor? Whenever bad things occur as a leader, your responsibility is not to turn around and conduct that heat onto your peers or your subordinates. Your responsibility is to first understand is how do I fail? And when I failed, how can I fix that in the, in the future? All that being said, I learn more from the poor leaders about how not to treat individuals, how not to take credit for things that you should never take credit for, how not to do a developmental counseling session. A difficult transition from a leadership transition that I think I've experienced from the military to corporate America is for senior leaders to stop necessarily holding revenue and money at such at at the mo at the ultimate outcome of success, and more so the development of their people and the celebrating of the development of their people, in order to create more leaders within your organization that propel you and ultimately derive more revenue out of that. Tough love isn't celebrating over and over and pouring over on how well somebody does. And that's great, but everybody always has the room to improve. So once a quarter, at least, you should be taking the time to be providing what I would call developmental counseling that is constructive in nature and never deconstructive. You know, another, another cultural mantra within leadership is the harder right over the easy wrong. You know, we're all, we're all uh, humans. We all make errors, you know. The great news is every day you wake up, you have another opportunity to, to be a better person. Comparison is the root of all jealousy. When your little kids are going through uh, um, swim lessons, not swim lessons, but at swim, swim events, at least my daughter and my son went through those. Anytime a kid starts popping their head up and looking left or right, their stride slows down, right? And then they start getting in their own head about how am I doing? I'm not doing very well. I got to speed up. Then they burn themselves out because they, they gassed, they gassed out early because you know, they, they compare. You can't compare yourself and your, your journey to anybody else.
make yourself uncomfortable. There's growth. There's individual mental cognitive growth that occurs when you put yourself in positions of greater responsibility that you weren't, weren't even wanting to participate in. The, the hardest thing to do when you're training on anything, whether it's uh, golf or fitness or marksmanship um, or sales is doing it over and over and over and over and over and over. That small display of discipline, that tiny little bit of display of discipline to yourself is a confidence booster. And it's those little building blocks that you need along the way that create a monster. Again, these are, these are words we all know, we all, we all understand it, but if you put them into um, simple cultural mantras, they stay with you and I think they help you along the way.